Hello and welcome in today's lecture. In today's lecture I want to show you that how you could monitor your Juno's devices through SNMP. Are you ready? Let's start our today's mission. We talked about SNMP or Simple Network Management Protocol in our Network Fundamental Parts. Just to make a quick review here, SNMP is a protocol that could help us to monitor our network devices. SNMP includes something which is called MIB. MIBs are databases that are recorded different information about the devices. And these informations are recorded as objects. And each of these objects has an identifier which is called OID or object identifier. To monitor your devices through SNMP, you need a SNMP server or NMS, Network Management System or Network Management Server. For example, SolarWinds, Nagios, PRTG or many other monitoring servers. And here we have agents on our devices. When we configure SNMP on our device, these agents are active and they are ready to send information. Normally, SNMP operates based on poll and response. I mean, we configure polling intervals on our NMS and based on these intervals, the server goes and asks the device, Hello, how are you? I want some information from you. For example, how much CPU do you use? How much memory do you use? How much bandwidth your interface is used? And any other information that could be provided by agents. These hello messages are these inside SNMP. Get, get bulk and get next. And the agents respond about this information through get response messages. As you remember that these communications in SNMP version 1 and version 2 are done based on a string which is called community strings and in SNMP version 3 something changes and SNMP version 2 you could provide more security. Anyway, if we configure community strings for read write mode or if we use SNMP version 3 we could configure it in a mode that we could write changes on the device that is not advised anyway. If the SNMP server wants to change something on the device, it sends set requests and the device sends back about the changes with set response messages. This is the normal operation of SNMP. SNMP server pull, SNMP agent response. But in critical situations, for example, an interface goes down. The SNMP agent on the device does not wait for the next pull and immediately send information about the event through traps to the SNMP server. And in this way, this SNMP server informed about critical situations immediately in the network. And you are behind this SNMP server and you inform about these critical situations and you have to react about it. This is the operation of SNMP. Okay, this is our scenario. We have a Juniper device, I connect it to my computer and I run SolarWinds Network Performance Monitor as my NMS or network management system. Now we are going to configure SNMP. We want to configure SNMP version 2 on our Junos. To do that, we go to edit SNMP configuration. Some of these configurations are mandatory and some of them are optional. These commands that I run first are optional. The first option is description. It's a description about your device and you have to put it in double quotations. For example, this is my SRX firewall. In this way you set description for your device. The next command which is still optional is setting location for your device. I will show you where this information could help you. Set location for example data center 1 row 1 rank 2. The next set contact. Who is responsible for this device? For example Patrice Kushesh is responsible for this device and his number is 234. All of these informations could help you to find information about the device when critical situation is happened. You will see all of these informations in your network management system. I will show you this. Next, we have to configure our SNMP community string and we run this command. Set community and our community string, for example, JunoS SNMP. And at the first step, we have to mention that we want to have it as read-only or read-write. As I mentioned before, read-write is very, very dangerous. So we select read-only. And after that, we could mention that who could pull information from this device. And it's a kind of access list that you allow a special server to get these information from this device. This could be very, very helpful for security. And we do this with clients. 
and in front of clients I mentioned the IP address of my NMS server with a slash 32. Next we go and configure traps. To configure traps you have to create trap groups. For example we create set trap group and the name of our trap group for example JNCIA-TR-GR for JNCIA trap group and we mentioned the version, version v2. This means that we want to have SNMP version 2. And next, we want to say that for which type of SNMP messages we want to send traps. We configure this with categories option. And for example, we choose chassis and we use links or link. And finally, you have to set a target for your trap group. This means that if something happen, for chassis or for links, send traps to this SNMP server. Targets 192.168.3.10. To show our configuration, we run show here and you see all of your configurations. We configure description, location, contact, our community string. We say that we want it in read only. We say that only this IP address could get information from this device. We define our trap group version 2 categories chassis and link this means that if something happened for chassis or for links send traps to who to this target and finally we commit our configuration and now we go to our snmp server and here i click new and we put our ip address of our juno's device here we click next we put our community string here juno as snmp and click finish and yes or no is no different and you will see a window just like this it goes to the device pull all of the informations that could be get from the snmp and list them here you could select each of these resources for monitoring or simply you could select all of them it depends on your monitoring strategies i select all and i click ok and you see that now i have my juno's device here and i could monitor these resources if you make a right click here and select know the details, you see the informations that we've configured them in SNMP. Description, this is my SRX firewall. Where it is, it is in data center 1, row 1, rack 2. Who must be contacted if something happened for this device, Patrice Gushesh with the number of 234. And these informations could be very very helpful when troubleshooting is needed. Okay, our today's mission is complete and in today's lecture we learned that how we could use SNMP to monitor our devices. Thank you for watching me. I hope this lecture helps you to improve your knowledge and see you in the next lectures.